Howdy folks. A month ago, or a couple months ago, uh, Z-Sake Swords, uh, who I, ha I have a video of one of their swords I got, the Heroes of Curry. Uh, their company saw my video, was fairly impressed, and, and asked if they could send me another review, or not another, but a review sample. And I was like, sure, <laughs> I would love to review a sword from you guys. So they sent me the Taoyuan, Ta Ta which means peach gardens. I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure. There's nothing about peaches on the katana, you know, in the fittings or anything. So maybe that's the, the, the uh, city that it was made. I, I'm not sure. But um, anywho, they sent me one. There's not going to be an unboxing. Because I already did that. And if you want to see an unboxing, I didn't do an unboxing because Joe from uh, Steel Forge and Fire Sword and Knife on his um, web, or his uh, channel, he did an unboxing of the one they sent him for a review. And they sent one to him, me, and Matthew Jensen, I do believe. Um, I don't know if they sent Matthew Jensen a tall you on the model, but they sent a tall you on to... Um, Joe, as well as me. We got the same one, but his is slightly different. Uh, let's grab it. This is the katana they sent me. It's a beautiful katana. A couple few things before we get a closer look uh, and uh, get this video rolling. There was a bit of sire rattle. Not much. Just very slight, um, and like me and Joe were talking on the phone, the Suba with its high black, I love this pattern, I love the Suba, um, but the high gloss black, uh, uh, I just, it just doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't fit well, and like I told Joe, I wish it was more like uh, antiqued or, or just uh, uh, the metal, the actual metal showing, and I'll put a picture of uh, Eric Hussein has has a uh, Suba, custom Suba, this style of exactly what I'm talking about, and I'll put it on the screen right here. Um, the blade, uh, the Nagasa is 28 inches from this uh, Munamachi, this little notch here, this is where you measure from this, to the Kasaki, the tip. It's 28 inches, and the steel is, uh, in their description on their website, it says they're, um, Smelted steel improved by us. That's what it says. So I don't know if they're keeping their stuff secret or what they're doing. Um, Skyjiro does the same thing. They won't tell you in their higher end katanas. They won't tell you exactly what the steel makeup is. They just won't. It's it's like a regarded secret. Secret, kind of like uh, the Colonel's Ken Kentucky Fried Chicken. Um, the handle. Well, let's get back to it. The handle is ten and a half. Um, the weight with the Saya is about uh, three pounds, no, is two pounds, three ounces. Uh, without the Saya, it's a pound and 14 ounces. Um, it holds well in the Saya. It's got perfect grip. Uh, the Habaki Koiguchi fit is perfect and just a little bit of a pop of the thumb and it comes out, which is nice. And I noticed when uh, um, returning the sword to the Saya, you have to have it just right, aligned just right. There's no binding or anything, but the Habaki will hit, as you see there. If I don't have it perfectly aligned, and we'll get into that in the video in a little bit. But other than that, Let's get into some closer looks and some cutting. We'll do some cutting with it. The Kojiri, which is polished buffalo horn, the end cap or butt cap to the uh, scabbard or saya. The saya itself is an Ishime style. This is black speckled paint over a nice deep red base paint. The Kurigata is also buffalo horn, and I like it because it's got a lot more character than the usual uh, Kurigata you see. Usually they're black. This has some grays and whites and browns in it. 
the koiguchi, the mouth of the saya, you can tell has been done with great care. Um, there's no glue or smudging or leftover residue from when they made it. And the seam on the buffalo horn to the saya itself, you can see here, it's just immaculate. Let's take a look at the Kashira. It's very detailed. It's got a, two flowers on it. I'm not sure what type of flowers these are. If anybody can uh, tell me, that'd be great. I, I could email Liu at the company and he could probably tell me, but lots of detail. The transitions of the brown silk Ito and the Kashira are perfect. I wouldn't expect anything less. Um, the diamonds there's a nice emperor node, but the, all the diamonds are uh, fairly uniform and, and aligned, and uh, you can see they're all here pretty much the same uh, length. Now when I push on the Ito, it, it does move. The knot is extremely tight here, but it does move, move just a little bit. It's, it's pretty tight, but you got to push really hard for it to move um, over the Manuki. You can see the Manuki move just a little bit. The transitions between the uh, Fuchi collar here and the Ito are spot on. And the Fuchi and Koiguchi line up. You know, and it doesn't hinder the performance when it's not lined up. It's just aesthetically speaking, it's just more appealing to the eye. Now the Samigawa, there's uh, large nodules, they use top grade Samigawa, which is the stingray skin underneath the silk wrap. The Manuki are the flowers motif still. Um, they're keeping that throughout the entire katana, which they usually do. And on the other side, the, the nodules are a little bit smaller as you get towards the Fuchi, but all in all, uh, top grade Samigawa. And it's held in by one bamboo mukugi peg, which is uh, this little sucker right there. Now the fuchi is keeping along the same motif, um, very detailed. I'm, uh, you know, I'm just really blown away by these fittings. The sepa are your standard copper uh, washers, and but I like how they're fitted perfectly, and and they don't overlap these holes, uh, which a lot of lower end katanas they will overlap a millimeter or two. The habaki is a standard copper habaki. Now remember, this is the least expect, expensive katana on their website. But the habaki is, is needs some polishing, um, but it's, it's growing on me. It's, it, I'm, I might let a patina built in. Um, the Munemachi here, it's very flush, better than the other katana I have from them. Looks like they worked on that a little bit. But it's, uh, you know, nothing special. But then again, I like the copper. It's not the usual brass. Um, it's formed well. It's fit well. No gaps down by the sepa. Uh, no gaps where the habaki meets the blade, as you can see here. Very tight. Fitted very well. All right, on to the blade. Blade time. Uh, the polish on this blade and the other one I have from uh, Zisei also is just absolutely top notch. Their polisher is a master of his craft. There's no doubt about it. The Yokote, that line at the Kasaki, the line that signifies the tip from the, uh, the rest of the blade is absolutely perfect. It's crisp. It's... It's just everything you'd want in a Kasaki. And, you know, a lot of people don't know, but it's the hardest thing on a katana to do is the Kasaki and make it right. And they have knocked this one right out of the park. And you can see there's uh, uh, different polishes. The strip uh, on the right is a mirror polish. 
and you can't see the grain of the steel. And then the center is like a, a different uh, type of polish, a more, it brings out the hada, which is the grain of the steel. And, and then there's the hamon, which is that milky white strip on the left. Here's some more pictures of the kasaki, um, which you can see are done very well. The flats of the blade have no ripples, um, no, no imperfections. All the lines are crisp, clean, and sharp. Absolutely impressed. The polisher uh, did an outstanding job. Okay, let's get down to seeing how this katana maneuvers and handles and cuts.
um, final thoughts. I know it was a long video, and I appreciate you guys, uh, my Katana. I'm pretty sure my Katana people stayed through through the whole thing, but um, uh, you know, I, I watched, look at my uh, analytics on my YouTube studio, and it shows a lot of click through. A lot of people click through fast and and don't necessarily watch the whole thing. But you guys got to remember that watching the entire video helps push the uh, video along and helps the algorithms uh, spread your, your video out there. People are watching the entirety of it. But I appreciate those uh, of you that stuck around this long and didn't fast forward through all of it. But a lot of my ramblings going on. But uh, final thoughts. You know, uh, me and Joe of uh, Steel Force and Fire, uh, Sword and Knife, we've done a lot of talking back and forth. And I've had a few comments uh, comparing Zisei with, with um, uh, Huawei or Skygiro, some of the top production katana companies out there. And, um, you know, the price range, this uh, Taoyuan is, uh, it was $800, $799 on the website. And I think Eric Hussain said it went up to $899. Um, and this is the cheapest one on their website. And I, I feel that it's worth it. To me, it's worth it, even the ones that are more expensive, because you can pay $800 for a Huawei, which is impeccable, or a Skygiro. Um, and and their, their fit and finish is good, the steel is good, the, the heat treat and the forging process are all top notch. Uh, but what you're getting with Zisei is uh, like for an $800 Huawei, um, which I have uh, four of, um, you know, they roughly are uh, anywhere from 800 to 500. Um, the fittings on there are just so plain and, and mundane. Uh, what you're getting on fit and finish and the quality of fittings for the same price of Katana from Zise is up here. Uh, the, the polishing is, is about the same, maybe a little bit better for Zise, in my opinion. Definitely the polishing on, on uh, compared to Skygiro, um, Zise is, is really uh, beating everybody, in my opinion. That's just my humble opinion. Others could uh, have a different opinion on it. And, and, and I feel that this is a true representation of what you're going to buy, what you're going to get. Um, they might send others uh, review samples that are uh, less than what you'd get. Because it's just a review sample, it's, it's, it's under par, so they send it out so they can test that. It, you know, I don't know. But um, Zise, in my book, is worth the money because you're getting a fit and finish, uh, higher quality fittings. And the polishing is just A+. Plus. So that's my opinion. And I'm sticking to it. So uh, God, family, friends, and country.